here we have a directed graph, um, and we want to find the strongly connecting components. And both these two graphs are pretty similar, but I covered both of them in the midterm one review, so I might as well just uh, go through both examples. So what we want to do is, here we don't want to do any DFS. What we want to do is we want to find the strongly connected components, right? So a strongly connected component mean that for any pair of uh, for any pair of vertices in that strongly connected component, there is going to be a path between them, right? So if there's a cycle, then this um, this is small. So the trivial case is a vertex by itself is a strongly connected component because it can it's the base case, and if you have any cycles, then all those vertices in that cycle is being part of a strongly connected component. And now here's one more thing you might want to know. If I have a strongly connected component here, and I have a strongly connected component here, and I have a vertex that's called A, that's part of the strongly connected component here, and part of this strongly connected component, then that means this entire thing is a strongly connected component. right? Because since A is part of this strongly connected component, there's a path between A and every other vertex, and this uh, any, uh, any of these vertices have a path to A. And since A also has a path to any of these vertices, and any of these vertices have a path to A, that means that any of these vertices can have a path to any of these vertices through A and vice versa. So if A is part of two strongly connected components, then the whole thing is a strongly connected component. right? Anyway, let's start at this. So there's a couple ways we can find strongly connected component. One is through DFS and um, mm, no, 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 yeah, one is through DFS, right? So I could DFS, and then I what I could do here is okay, I DFS, and once I stop DFS, that's your DFS tree, and I can continue and so on, right? But it's kind of not, we kind of don't want to do it like that. If we have, if we want to do this by hand rather than DFS, okay, see if this connects to back to any of the vertices I have seen so far, then that component is a strongly connected component, but I'm kind of not part of it until I find another vertex coming back. But it's kind of annoying. So what I'm going to do from uh, us, so not a computer, a computer can't do this, but we can, is we want to find cycles, right? Or we want to find the easiest um, strongly connected component. And then remember the easiest thing there is, is a vertex by itself, which means that if I have a vertex by itself and it doesn't actually go anywhere, that means you can't visit any other vertex from you, so you have to be a strongly connected component by yourself, which in this case is going to be J, right? J can't visit anything else. That means it is, it's a strongly connected by, component by itself because it's going to um, violate the SEC rule. Well, uh, something else that we could see is we can find cycles, like CNF, here's the cycle. And in this cycle, it doesn't go it doesn't go anywhere else, right? So I can't go somewhere and come back. So there's no other vertex part of the strongly connected component. It can be by itself. And another vertex that we can look at is something that there's no incoming edges, right? J is a sink, it can't visit anything else. It's a strongly connected component. A is a source, it has no incoming edges. So it has to be a strongly connected component by itself as well. I can't visit something and that other vertex can't visit back. right? If I can't come back, it can't be part of the same SEC. Now we look at E and F. Yeah, E and H. E and H is a strongly connected component. right? However, this S strongly connected component has an outgoing vertex to B, has an outgoing vertex to D, which comes back to this E and H. So this whole thing is a strongly connected component. And finally, we have G, right? So now let's make a DAG or a directed acyclic, uh, a directed acyclic graph, right? So out of this SEC. So here I have my metagraph, and I want to make a DAG out of it, right? So here's a DAG. I have my A as a vertex to CF, right? Which also has an edge to this big SEC, which is B, D, E, and H. And I have G, right? Since both D and H have vertex edge to G, I have one edge 
from this SEC to G, G has one edge to here, and this has one edge to J. See that even though they have multiple edges, I don't draw both of them because that's kind of redundant. I only need one. All right, now we have an edge with no cycles. Next, we want to topological sort them. So here, what we could do is topological sort this edge. We could either DFS and reverse the top um, and find using the reverse topological ordering, right? So let's do that as an example. A DFS one, two post three post order number. 3, 4, 5, post order, 6, nothing else, 7, back, 8, and 10. Now I'm going to uh, sort them by the reverse post order. I go by 10 first, right? Next I go to this thingy, B, D, this S, E, C, H, as 8, as the next thing. And then look at 7, right? It's bigger than 5 and 3. And then look at J as the next smallest post order number. And then I have C and F, which is um, three, smallest post fit number. I have a vertex coming from, oh no, not this one, from G, edge coming from G, and I have an edge coming from A. So this is a top of your sorting. And the reason why this works with a reverse, um, reversing the post order is because if you, when you start at a vertex, because it's a DAG and we know it's connected, right? We assume that this is a connected DAG. When I start at a vertex, I visit everything, right? So by the time I come reach this post visit number, I must have visit I must have finished visiting all my children and all its children's children, all those neighbors too, right? So by the time I post back up to here, I would have post visited all my children and post visited all children's children and so on. So and the, the sync node is always going to be that post visit with like immediate pre and then post, right? And if I, and then I post back and I post back and so on. So in that order, because the visit I start uh, visiting, I start DFS on first has the, it's going to like post visit after I visit everything of my neighbors, it has to come first. That largest post order has to come first, right? And the second largest post visit has to come next because Again, I visit at all my vertices, right? I pre, pre everything else, post all of these um, children, and then I move back to my starting vertex, and I have to, I have, I have to be the next um, vertex in line, right? So the main takeaway of using this is that okay, I have, I DFS is going to start from a vertex, going to um, recursively call everything, pre and post all these values before I post myself back. So the largest post value here has to be the one that comes first, right? And so on for the second and third and all those components in my DAG. Okay, now we'll work on this one and I'll show you another way to kind of get the topological sorting from a DAG. So what we're gonna do is we find strongly connected components. So we have sync, uh, source, the source here. Um, we have cycles, because there's no actually no sync. So we have this cycle here we have this cycle and it only has incoming edges, right? And finally we have A, B, E, right? This is a cycle, but then A can visit D, we come back to E, and E is part of this SEC, so it must mean that this has to be the whole thing, right? Notice that A, B, E, A, B, E is an SEC, a, D, E is also a cycle in SEC. Since A and E are part of both SECs, that means B can visit D through E, A, B. D can visit B through D and e, D and A. So together, B and D combined with A and E become one strongly connected component, like the kind of example I showed here. So let's make a metagraph. J, edge to C and F, um, edge to A, B, E, and D edge to this thing, and edge to G and H, right? So I now have another, I now have another DAG. And here, I'm gonna show uh, what we call it, the cons algorithm, which um, you might not learn, but it's useful for finding strongly connected components. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at all my source, my current source nodes. So I have J, right? my source of a metagraph, I have J as the source node. I pop it off and I look at this edge, all those edges, right? What I'm gonna do, I'm kinda gonna, I'm gonna delete 
these edges. And I have to delete all the edges. I look at, OK, have I made one of these a source node? right? So by deleting this edge from Metagraph J to ABED, this meta Metagraph has now became a source node. So I add it to the source node set. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a j into my pre or, uh, my topological sorting order. Next, I pop off my source node. Um, I delete edges, these two. I see that both of, um, by deleting this edge, I make c and f a source. I make g and h a source. And now I can add a, b, e, d in the next order of my topological sorting. Now, since they're both sources, it doesn't matter which one I take out, right? Because if they're both in there at the same time, you can't, there can't be an edge between them. Because the only way to add one of these metagraphs in the source node, I must have deleted an edge from another vertex and add it in. So if I delete an edge from here, that means I would have popped C and F out of the source node in the first place, right? So C, they're like, if I had an edge going into G and H that I popped off the source, I can't, it couldn't have been in there. I, I popped it off. I, I don't add it back in, right? So it doesn't matter which one I pop off. Let's just do C and F. Um, I pop off C and F. I have an edge here. I have an edge here. Next, I pop off G and H. Metagraph here. Um, I have this thing. And since the source set is done, there's no more edges, um, metagraph or vertices to pop off, I now have my topological ordering, right? So here I showed you how um, I found the SECs, and also show how we there's two ways we could topological sort a directed acyclic graph. This is using DFS and reversing the post order number. Here is kind of like um, if you don't want recursion, right? Post pre and post uses recursion. This is an iterative method where I use a source set and I'm like building edges until I get my topological sorting.